Hey guys, Marcus from Chamber of Progress here. Um, with this Supreme Court stuff going on, 4th of July coming up, and everything that's happening, there are some important questions we all need to be asking ourselves. You know, this, this is a time not to find out whether or not we can keep our republic, as Benjamin Franklin once put it. But it's more a question of, do we really want to keep it? Do we really want it? Do we want something different? You know, do we want like, do we want a dictatorship? Do we want uh, a more social democratic system? Do we want a more libertarian style system where it's like basically anarcho-capitalism, which results in total chaos as history has shown us? One thing's for sure now though, our, our current Congress is so corrupt, it's been captured by the most greedy and ruthless, self-serving people that our society has to offer. The Federalist Society has made absolutely certain that our court system is packed to the brim with their hand-picked judges who basically are there to rule on cases that will ensure that the only system that can exist in this country from here on out is unregulated, laissez-faire, anarcho-capitalism where the most ruthless and greedy, self-serving, cutthroat people in society make it to the top and by extension, subjugate everybody else. You know, so you don't have to have tyranny in the government in order for it to be classified as tyranny. It's basically tyranny through the economy. So libertarians definitely have a kind of warped view of this. I don't think they're malicious. I don't think they, they mean any harm to people here. But that's exactly what happens when you have this type of economic arrangement that they're uh, promoting. So I would strongly urge them to reconsider their stance on this and what liberty and freedom actually means because liberty and freedom is subjective. It really depends on who you ask. And more than that, freedom and liberty are paradoxes really because what's free to one group of people is subjugation to other people. So if you're wealthy, if you're a wealthy person and you think that you're free, you know, you have all the money, you have all the power, everybody else is just doing what you take, what you say without question. That's your, maybe your idea of freedom, okay? But for the people who are subjugated, for the people who have to just do what you say, that's not freedom to them. That's tyranny. But when they have a more democratic say in the economy and things can be more, okay, one person, one vote in business places in the economy, and that can manifest politically as well. We could have a more socially democratic uh, style of, of governing in this country, that's freedom to the, re to the rest of the people, but it's tyranny to the people who simply want to make more money. So all these questions running through our heads, guys, I mean, the Supreme Court has basically made itself illegitimate with the decisions it's making. A lot of people say, well, we should expand the Supreme Court. Some people say term limits. Some people say circulation like they do in, in the church. I agree with the last two, term limits and circulation like they do in the church. I think that's a better way to do it because if you try to expand the Supreme Court, the Republicans are just gonna come in and try to retaliate against that. Now, as far as constitutional amendments or any kind of bylaws that we pass in our Congress, well, the opposition can just come in and undo that and put their own in. The only way to really legislatively reform things in a way that would be, uh, would ensure that the will of the people is carried out in perpetuity is to make certain that we have ballot access for all parties and we have ballot measures every election cycle when it comes to the basic commons. Now, what are the basic commons? Well, we would have to decide that through popular vote. And once we decide what qualifies as the commons in popular vote, in perpetuity through elections, we, we basically use a ranked choice arrangement that says, all right, here are the commons. Here's how we rank them from one to whatever, according to what's most important to the least important. And then it would be the government, the Congress, the Parliament's job, whatever we end up with in the future, to make sure that that's carried out and they have no veto power over our decision. That's the best way to do that. But right now, I mean, we gotta figure out how to get out of a fascist regime now. You know, this is what the Germans were facing, you know, at the end of World War II when they realized that they had been duped by Hitler and the Nazi regime. So we're facing a similar scenario. And what these people have done, like the Nazis in the past, they infiltrated positions of power 
and they corrupted the, the once democratic institutions to serve their own purposes. So, a lot to think about this 4th of July, folks. I don't consider this a day for celebration, the 4th of July, that's actually tomorrow, but I consider it a day of mourning, a day of remembrance for what we once had, what we could have moving forward. We need to remember what we've lost, realize what we could have moving forward and actually fight back. It's not a question of whether or not our founding fathers would have done certain things during this time. What they want is irrelevant. What matters is what we do now. So, something to think about, guys. I hope y'all are doing well. Catch y'all later.